Well, good evening, everyone. Um, we are so glad that you all have joined us again this week um, for God's Blueprint for Family as we continue to um, just go through the Word of the Lord and reflect on God's Blueprint for our life in general. You know, as we speak, of course, we know um, we've said in past times that the family unit is based on the marriage and you know that's the foundation of it and so those are just some of the things that we've talked about and of course we always enjoy um, this opportunity that we have to discuss the word and um, not just talking about it of course we always always encourage those of you who are tuned in to share your comments and questions that you may have because um, you just never know how it might be a blessing to others who are listening and um, sometimes, um, for whatever reason, a person can have a question and may be afraid to ask it. So, you know, it's just like we did when we were in, in school. <laughs> you know, um, someone else asked the same question that you have and you get the answer. And so don't be shy about um, pressing one on your phone if you're there or logging into the chat room and um, submitting your question or comment there. We welcome that and you don't necessarily have to wait until the very end of the show if you have a question or comment concerning something that we're discussing um you can press one and of course we will um get to you as soon as we can amen we again thank you all for joining us of course my name is brother hawk bolden and this is my wife sister antoinette bolden and uh we're always delighted to bring you the word of the lord so we'll just jump right into it, what, what God have uh, laid on our hearts. Last week, we started talking about train up a child. Of course, that's taken out of the book of Proverbs that tells us to train up a child in the way that he should go so that when he is old, he will not depart from that, you see. And so that's what we're going to discuss today is training up our children. And you know, this training, uh, we have to point this out, it, it begins uh, when they first come out of the womb as babies, you see. And... I think um, God is our perfect example of, of a father and uh, how we train up a child and, and things like that. You know, the, the same way that he raises us up, you see. And I think he's a perfect example of what a father is. And so we, uh, it would be to our benefit if we would learn to look at God and the way that he does things um, as far as training up our children. And one thing we know, you know, I mean, like I said, this starts from the time that they are born. And we know that one thing that God does not do is he doesn't come running every time he calls on us, every time we call on him. Mm. You see, he, he moves in his own time. And I think that's one of the things that we can, we can pay attention to as well. Right. And when a child is born, of course, they used to be cradled by that mother's womb. And... Um, you can start off very early training your child to be a little spoiled brat. In other words, every time I cry, somebody's going to come running. So, and unfortunately, <laughs> they never grow out of that, some of them. Some of them, they grow up being brats and thinking that every time they get into trouble, every time, you know, something is uncomfortable for them, they got a right to whine about it or they have a right to cry about it or whatever the case is, you see. And so... You, you start off training that child. You don't take off running to that child as a baby, I should say, as soon as they start crying. You know, and that teaches them because what happens is parents will train a baby. Well, every time you cry, if, if you want me to come running, this is all you have to do is cry. Mm -hmm. You see, so when that baby come out, you let them cry for a little bit. It's not going to kill them. You know, just let them cry for a little bit and just get to them, you know. Of course, you want to check, make sure that that, you know, nothing is wrong or anything like that, but just crying, just to be crying or whatever, you let them cry for a little bit. It ain't, it's not going to hurt them. It's not going to kill them, you see. And so that's one of the things we have to learn because, see, God doesn't do that. When, when we come to him, uh, he does not just come to our running, come to us uh, running every time we whine and complain or, or whatever the case is, you <laughs> see. And so that's one of the things that we have to take, that we have to take note of. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And we just want to keep in mind, you know, is where uh, the, the topic is training up a child. And um, we always want to consider, you know, what is it, how is it that we see our children in the future? You know, as we're talking about um, 
comparing the Lord's parenthood or parentship to ours and, and how we can use him as our perfect example. Um, the Lord sees, you know, what we're going to become. And in that, um, he trains us and he prepares us and he molds us and he corrects us and all of that so that we can become that what he already sees us as, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he sees the final product. And so when we're training our children, you know, that's an example that we can follow. You know, what is it that we want to see our children be become? You know, do we want to see them walking, you know, in righteousness before the Lord? Then if we're going to train them, that means we have to live that way. Mm -hmm. If we want to um, show them how to be responsible people, um, to take care of their business or whatever it is, we have to train them in that. And it's so much more than just talking. Um, and it's so much more than talking just one time, but it's talking and showing and talking more and showing and allowing them to see and sometimes walking them through it, being hands on. Um, and so that's just something else that we have to keep in mind. Keep that, that final product or that final picture in mind. What is it that I want to see my child become? And then, you know, am I being that example? Am I helping to train and rear them in the word to push them into, you know, that, into, um, that level of maturity or, or where they're going to be in the future? Mm -hmm. And one thing we want to say, we, we believe, uh, you know, of course, if, if God chastises us as his children, then we have to also chastise our children. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'll say this, you know, a lot of times, People are the kind of parents that they are as children to God, if that make mm -hmm. any sense. In other words, whatever kind of child you are of God, wherever you, whatever your relationship is with God, that's what kind of parent you're going to be. And so God's wisdom is far above and beyond man's thinking and man's wisdom. And so God lets us know that we are to chastise the child. It says to, to chastise them and don't spare for their crying. Mm -hmm. And so children, of course, you know, they'll yell and scream and kick uh, when you get to spanking their backsides. But the Bible tells us not to spare because of that, you see. And a lot of times parents don't chastise their children because they're not, they don't enjoy, I guess, or they don't take to the chastening of the Lord. Mm -hmm. In other words, they don't like submitting to God's authority and maybe they think God is overbearing or whatever, and God chastises them, and they reject it, they refuse it. And so when they have children of their own, it, it's the same thing. They allow their children to get, get away with things that, uh, that, they, that God may not have allowed them to get away with, and that type of thing. And so, you know, the kind of parent you are, that's very, very indicative of the kind of child you are to God, or the kind of person that you are, whatever kind of relationship you may have with God, you see, and that's what God wants us to understand. You know, if we don't know how to receive correction from God, then we're not going to know how to give correction to our children and things like that. We'll constantly be lenient towards them and lenient, and, and before you know it, you got somebody that's out of hand, out of control, and I think the deceptive part of that is they start off young, and so right, right away is nothing major, but you're not thinking ahead that, you know, that, that little boy that's going in the store and taking popsicles or taking, you know, uh, bubble gum, uh, pretty soon they'll be stealing somebody's car, you see. Mm -hmm. So it, that devil starts off at a young age with them. And so uh, we have to start off as well, training them and teaching right. them those things. Because if we don't, they're in trouble, you see, mm -hmm. they're in trouble. And so chastisement is, is something. And we'll get more into that, into detail with that uh, and maybe in another lesson or so, but chastisement is, is a very important part of training that child. And also, you know, I think one of the most important issues, one of the most important things that you can do for a child it's, is to teach them in respect to God's law. Right. In other words, you know, God's word says this. This isn't just mom and daddy's rule mm -hmm. as far as, you know, not stealing or whatever the case is. God's law says this. God says this is the way, you know, we're supposed to be, you see. And when you teach them that, it, it teaches them to have a whole nother respect, in other words. You know, now they know it's not just mom and daddy 
is God. And even when mom and dad is not looking, God is always looking. And I think that's something that we need to instill in our children. All right. And I was actually about to bring out that same point that, you know, we have to keep in mind that, you know, of course, we're believers. And the question is always, what do we believe? And if we believe the word, then we should be practicing that. And a, a major part of that is not trying to wait until your child is um, adolescent or preteen before you start to introduce the Lord to them, but to do it while they're young. I mean, you think about it when, you know, um, our oldest daughter, for example, she was already reading books at three years old. That means something was being taught. And children will learn, and especially between the ages of one and five, they're, they're sponges. And you can teach them anything, you know, and they'll soak it up and they'll learn it. And that's the perfect time to start teaching them about the Lord and not just um, learning Bible scriptures and singing songs, but really taking the time to explain to them, you know, in, in our everyday life as parents, how we're living for the Lord. And to tell them, just like you said, bring it back to the word. You're not just doing this because mom and dad said it. You're doing this because you really desire to please the Lord. And they're not too young to understand that. That's right. You know, many children, you know, they can sing every song that come on the radio and they can learn, you know, all the lessons in, in pre-K or in, you know, daycare, whatever you teach them, they can um, give that back to you. They can regurgitate that. That's right. You know, and so we have to be mindful as believers that, you know, we're not just talking it, but we're walking it and we're able to um, show them in our life, mm -hmm. you know, um, that we are actually living for the Lord and that we're accountable to the Lord That's right. and, and be able to explain to them, you know, why, you know, whatever rules we have and whatever guidelines, whatever boundaries we have that all of this is to the glory of the Lord because we want to live for him. That's right. And I, I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the things, that's like a pet peeve of mine. Hearing a child singing a secular song, but mom and daddy don't think they can learn Bible verses. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that devil's got them singing uh, <laughs> stuff that they shouldn't be singing. They can learn verses too, you see. Right. But it's all about, like what you said, it's about what you put in them and what you take in time. Mm -hmm. And we better make sure as parents that we're taking time with our children and, and placing the word of God in them because the devil is constantly bombarding them with his doctrine and with, what, right. and with his way of life. And so we have to make sure that we are outdoing the devil, you know, when it <laughs> comes to, uh, uh, you know, what, what our children is taking in and things like that. And children are not too, like you said, they're not too young to learn. You could teach them at an early age to have a relationship with God, to pray. Right. And when they do something wrong, to repent, not only to you as a parent, but to God as well. You know, mm -hmm. and, and they, those things will go with them. Those things will go with them. Um, <clears throat> I remember one time after church, our youngest daughter uh, <clears throat> had gotten sick. And um, this was some years ago, had gotten sick and after church and... Uh, and, you know, I knew that she was pretty sick because she didn't go outside to play like she normally did. And she was just laying there in bed. And uh, uh, the the second, our second oldest daughter, uh, actually the second youngest daughter, I guess you could say, she came in um, and asked me for the blessed doll. And I said, yeah, okay. He asked me where it was. And I told her where it was. And I asked her why. And uh, she said, well, I'm going to go pray for a treasure. I'm going to go lay hands on her and pray for her. And uh, she went and laid hands on her and prayed for her, and treasure was up playing, you know, within a few minutes. And I just thought, you know, now this was not anything that I'd ever just sat down and taught them. But what it was, they saw me do that all the time. Whenever they got sick, I would pray for them. Or uh, when other people got sick, sometimes I would go and pray for them and things like that. And so it let me know that even when... You're not paying attention. Your children are watching you, you see, mm -hmm. and they'll learn from our behavior. So like what you said, you know, we have to learn to live in front of them the way that we want them to be. Right. You see, we have to learn that. And when they see us fall short, we have to learn to ask for forgiveness and let them know what the right and correct way is to be. You see, right. because children, they, I'm going to tell you something, uh, as parents, it's not enough for us to drag our children to church and hope that the preacher say something to inspire them. Mm -hmm. 
you see. Right. It, that day is over, you know. And, and unfortunately, there are a lot of children who are coming up mad at God because mom and daddy was a hypocrite or because they saw hypocrisy in the church, you see. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 it takes more than us just dragging them to church and, and, and making them to bear with, you know, the messages and, and, and things that they may not even be getting. We have to make this an everyday part of their lives. You see, we have to make right. this a part of their everyday lives if we're going to be successful at, at being parents. Amen. Yeah. I was just going to say, too, that, you know, in training children, we have to realize that children pick up on patterns. And I know we, co we covered this um, a little bit some, some time ago, maybe when we first started um, um, God's Blueprint for Family. We kind of brought up kids a little bit. Children pick up on patterns. And... Children can, um, let me see, they can be pretty manipulative. Um, when they see that they can get away with things, they will try and try and, you know, whatever they get away with, they will get away with it. And so we have to be really, really careful of the messages that we send them. Um, we have to be consistent in what we teach. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm going with that because children, you know, I think you used an example before, you know, if the parents come home and they're, angry and, and they're kind of taking it out on the kids, you know, only fussing when they're angry about something else. But then when they're in a good mood, they are um, just kind of letting the kids slide and get away with different things. Children pick up on patterns like that. And so we have to be consistent in what we're training them, what we're teaching them. You know, if they do something wrong and we say, hey, you know what? The Bible says you need to repent then every time they do something that requires repentance, we need to make sure we're leading them to that. And, you know, just in different areas, we have to um, make sure that we're being consistent in how we're training our children. Amen. Um, another example um, I'll use concerning training our kids and being consistent is not only in how we discipline not only in how we discipline them, but um, just in being consistent in, in different things that we may teach them concerning, you know, it can be something as simple as homework, um, being responsible, being respectful, the different things like that that we teach to make sure that not only are we training them to be consistent with those things, but that they're actually able to see that in us because, you know, as you mentioned, um, kids grow up and as adults, you know, you've heard many verbalize that they've seen hypocrisy that, you know, the parents drug them to church and the parents went to church, but they saw a different life inside of the house. And so we have to make sure that our walk with God is consistent, you know, that we're not saying that, hey, we serve, you know, a holy and a righteous God, but then we're... Um, living unrighteous and unholy or our conversation is um, not righteous before the Lord and our children are seeing these things. Because again, we have to uh, remember that we're looking at what we want that end result to be. You know, we don't want to, um, we're looking at what we want the end result to be, which means we're not going to um, see the result of what we're teaching them right away, but we're looking, you know, we, we're, we're training them over a period of time is what we have to realize. And so we're not going to always see, you know, the result of that right away, but we have to continue to be consistent, you know, in our walk before the Lord, in the things that we teach them, you know, year after year, week after week, day after day, they need to be able to see us walking um, upright before the Lord and, and, see us living the very thing that we're trying to teach them. And I think that's one of the most important things that we can um, teach our children, and that is being consistent with whatever rules, guidelines, boundaries, whatever you, know, whatever you set, just do it consistently so that that child knows, okay, this is not just a game. This is not one day it's this, the next day it's something else. You know, I can sneak and get away with this this day because you know, mom and dad or, you know, in their own world, you know, whatever the case is, because again, those kids, they pick up on those patterns and um, the enemy don't wait until they're an adult before he starts to try to bring thoughts to their mind about being 
deceptive or being manipulative or, you know, pushing the envelope or, you know, trying to cross those boundaries without getting in trouble. You know, we can all remember, I'm sure, some things that we did as kids, you know, that and we thought, hey, you know, I got away with that. The only problem with kids sneaking and getting away with things, they grow up and they become adults who do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you find in your own life, you know, if you, uh, all of us, I'm sure, can examine in our life some things that um, we may not have done in integrity or in godly integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, if, um, and, and you can trace it back, I'm sure, to some things that went uncorrected or unaddressed as a child because you don't just, turn 18, 21, 25, and then suddenly you have integrity. Mm -hmm. That has to be your practice all along. But in order for that integrity to be there, someone has to challenge you whenever you're doing something wrong. That's you know, right. and someone has to teach you, hey, you know what? That's not the way you do that. You know, when, you, when you're having friends over, you don't boss them around. You share your toys. And you know what I'm saying? You don't treat them badly or you don't talk to them in the wrong the wrong way but then the children have to see us and how we interact with people and they have to see how we treat people so that they will know how to treat people as well That's right. so you know again consistency that is one of the major major things that you know parents have to offer their children being consistent you know in that training process that's right and we and it's like what you're saying we have to learn to be stable. Uh, we have to learn um, basically not to be hypocrites. We need to be the example that we want them to be, mm -hmm. you know, and we have to be careful. You know, uh, a lot of times parents, uh, they tell a child to be one way, but they themselves are another way. And, uh, of course, that's not the proper way to be. We have to learn to be consistent. We have to learn, you know, that children need that stability. You know, mm -hmm. they don't need the emotional roller coaster. And oftentimes, like what you stated earlier, uh, they, they don't need for mom and daddy to come home and, and, you know, take out anger on them for whatever reason. They need that stability. Mm -hmm. You see, they need that teaches them not to be manipulative and, and, and things like that with, you know, OK, she's having a bad day today. So I'm going to watch my P's and Q's or, you know, and, and, you know, she's having a good day today. So I'm going to cut up or whatever the case may be. We have to learn to be persistent with them and make sure that uh, that that they understand that that mm -hmm. their actions or whatever the case may be uh, when they're corrected is not based on how we feel or mm -hmm. you know or anything like that that the consequences of whatever consequences they may experience you know with them getting out of line has nothing to do with feelings or emotions or anything like that you see All right. and so that's really important. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important that we always um, point out to our children, and this goes back to the fact that, you know, they're going to grow up and become adults. They have to understand that choices bring about consequences, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not good um, to overlook that, you know, that leniency that you talked about, because what happens is, um, the child will grow up to be an adult who thinks every time uh, they may do something and bring about a consequence, but then they, they'll blame it on some other situation or they'll blame it on someone else and they don't ever see themselves. And I'm telling you, that is one of the major things that, you know, we need to know as adults how to take responsibility for our own actions. But again, all of that starts with the children when they're young. Mm hmm you know, if you disobey, if you disobey your parents, then there are consequences for it. You don't reward them, you know, if you want them to change their behavior. You know, um, if you don't do your homework or you don't study, the consequences that you won't get good grades or if, you know, whatever it is. If you, you're not doing your chores then you don't get the extra time to play with your friends, you're going to lose something, you know, as a result of that. And we have to... Um, you know, realize that, like I said, as adults, we are responsible, you know, for every choice we make. And um, we want to, you know, we want to teach our children to make those choices according to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and even when they mess up, say, hey, you know, the word says to do it this way. You did it this way, you know, and this is what needs to happen next time. And this is, you know, this is how the Lord will want you to handle that. And this is what's pleasing to the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not that, you know, and there, there was something else I wanted to point out. It's not that we want to um, scare our children like, oh, you better do this or the Lord's going to strike you down because that's not the t kind of relationship that we should have with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, we should have a a willing loving a uh, relationship that we enjoy having with the Lord where you know we're looking to do things that please him and and not that it it's a burden for us to live for him mm -hmm. you know and that's the message that we want to send across to our children as we're training them that hey you know living for the Lord is something to be enjoyed it's a blessing it's a privilege mm -hmm. you know it's an honor and not that, you know, hey, the Lord's going to strike you down. You know, you better do this or you're going to hell. You know, we, I think we need to teach them that hell is real. But not, on the, uh, not in the manner that, hey, you know, I told you to do your homework and you didn't do it. So, you know what? God's going to get you. Yeah, there has to be some balance. <laughs> All right. There has to be some balance there. And, they, and like you said, they need to understand that there are consequences to disobedience. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that parents make today is that they don't teach their children consequences for disobedience. Mm -hmm. you, so you see, uh, uh, just consequences for anything, really. Right. You know, every, every action has a reaction, pretty much. You know, and uh, children need to be taught consequences, whether right. it's good or bad. If mm -hmm. you do good, you know then you can expect good. If you do bad, expect bad. And unfortunately, it's got grown folks that never got that lesson, you know, that there are consequences that, you know, so you don't plant corn and expect peas, you know. You, you reap what you sow, mm -hmm. you see. And our children, are, you know, and, my, and I hate to see it when it gets to the point where parents have lost control of their children and they're not able to do anything and the children are running the parents crazy because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, little bitty children, running the parents crazy because they just, you have to train a child. You can't expect them to come here already knowing how to behave and what to do. They have to be trained, All you right. see. And when we get out of our place with training our children, then our children will always be out of order. They'll always, you know, be out of order. And so we, part of that training, as you stated, is consequences, teaching them, you know, the right way as opposed to the wrong way. And giving them some initiative also to want to do the right thing. And mm -hmm. I think that's very important as well, you know, teaching them the benefits of doing the right thing. And also using life lessons, mm -hmm. you know, and, and many times we, we want to shield our children from different things. But teach them, hey, this is what happens. You know, you teach them adult lessons. In other words, they're not too young to grasp the idea of being in trouble. Or uh, what happens, you know, mm -hmm. when when you do the wrong thing and all of this stuff, you see. We we have to teach them and we have to make those things real to them, you see. Right. And I mean, and I think we as parents, we need to look for opportunities, you know, uh, to teach our children, you know, that this is what happens when you do the right thing or the wrong thing, your decisions and, and that you mm -hmm. make, you know. And basically all really pointing back to God about what his word says concerning what, what he said, I said before you, life and death, choose life, you see. Mm -hmm. And so God set before us our whole lifetime decisions that we can make. And so we right. teach our children to make the right decisions so they can get good results in their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, and as you talk about, you know, using life situations to talk to children, you know, we all sit down and watch movies or TV at some point. And um, oftentimes there are situations in movies that, you know, you can stop and talk to your children about or it may be something going on in the news. It may be something really, really personal going on in your family mm -hmm. that you can say, hey, you know, this is a praise report or, you know, this is a prayer request because this person <laughs> <laughs> um, made a choice to do whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now they're experiencing the consequences behind it. So, you know, let's pray for them. And, and, and by the way, you know, learn from this. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, when you grow up, you know, you might be faced with some decisions like this and look at what this person is going through, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Amen. So we have many opportunities to share things with them. And again, I think sometimes we we make the mistake, and, you know, as a parent, we say, oh, you know, they're young and, 
you know, you, you want to shield them and you don't want them to learn. But I tell you one thing I learned as a parent is that we need to teach our children before the kids at school teach them. Mm -hmm. And the kids in the neighborhood and the kids on the bus and the kids at the community center or, you know, wherever, because we don't know what everybody else is teaching. Mm -hmm. And so we need to instill in them first, you know, those foundational beliefs and, and character characteristics and, and things and, of, of how they're supposed to act before, you know, we miss it. And then other children are talking to them and they're picking up all sorts of bad habits. And then we have to try to figure out, okay, well, where did this come from? Yeah. And, and trying to reverse those things, you know, mm -hmm. we need to talk to them um, all the time and as early as possible. Amen. <laughs> That's for sure. Amen. Amen. And so we, we just have to purpose within ourselves that with all of the things the devil has out there to teach our children, that we're going to be the number one teacher and that we're going to bombard it and we're going to catch those things uh, before the devil can bring them. You see, that we're going to catch them and that we're going to basically head the devil off with the things mm -hmm. that he's trying to teach our children. And, that, and that's only right, you see. That's only right. Uh, God has plenty of word for us to use uh, when it comes to us teaching our children and uh, you know I mean plenty of life lessons in there that mm -hmm. that God has in there for us if we'll if we'll learn to use them you know and and I think the best teacher is God's word that best the best teacher is God's word it's is constantly there and it's and it's you know it teaches us so it should be able to teach our children All right amen All right. All right. If that we right now we have we have experienced some technical difficulties, so we're not going to uh, be able to take uh, any calls tonight um, or anything like that. And so uh, we're just, you know, of course, <laughs> still don't know what's going on with the with the technical issue, but uh, we were able to get back up and running so that you all could hear the broadcast and things like that. So. And so we apologize for that. We just ask that if you had any questions or comments tonight that you would uh, uh, remember them. And next week we'll be here. Uh, we'll be here, you know, same time next week to share more of God's blueprint for family with you all. And, of course, if, um, if it's something that you want to talk about, we're always open. You can certainly call us at 615-530. 6138 um, if you want to discuss something you know before next week you're welcome to do that as well and of course you can log on to the website and um, you can submit questions or comments that way as well or th you know through email um, again we apologize for the inconvenience um, but one thing I want to share you know with all who are listening whether your parents or parents to be um, you know, if you're not even married yet, but know you may want to have children at some point. You know, children are a blessing from the Lord. Make no mistake about it. Um, but the, the devil's job is to take anything that God has blessed or ordained or sanctioned and try to pervert it um, so that it becomes um, a burden to us. Mm -hmm. And so you may... Um, already maybe you've had some difficulties with your children and maybe you know feel like oh it's wearing down on you or you, you might feel burdened by it but you know I just want to encourage you to um, remember you know as believers we believe the word and if the word says that children are a blessing then the next thing we have to do if we're having difficulties is to pray and ask the Lord for wisdom and how to deal with those children and how to deal with whatever situations that may arise concerning those children that may be causing friction or causing a burden or, you know, causing, you know, chaos or whatever it may be. And, um, you know, the Lord says in his word that if any man lack wisdom, you know, let him ask because he will give it freely and upbraid it not. And so we need to just ask the Lord, you know, because we're all different. We all, you know, our children are different. And anybody who has more than one child know that the personalities of each child totally different you know it's like they they can be like night and day and so that means you can't handle each child the same exact way you know and ask the lord you know how to deal with the situation so that you won't see that child as a burden but as a blessing because that's what the lord you know intended for it to be 
That's right. And you better cut it off before <laughs> before they get too old because <laughs> <laughs> they'll cause you a lot of grief. That's what the word says, that, you know, mm -hmm. a ch when you leave children to themselves, in other words, if you don't chastise them, uh, they will bring you grief. They will bring you grief. And so you, our job is to help to show you how to stop it from getting to that point. Now, of mm -hmm. course, we know that ultimately children will grow up and they will have their free will. But your job as a parent is to implant that word in them so that at least they'll have something to come back to. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, we're going to close with a word of prayer. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for um, just this opportunity that we've had to um, discuss your word and just reflect on the fact that, you know, you've blessed us, many of us, with children. And even though the enemy tried to... Um, bring things to us as parents to discourage us and even to try to use our children, Lord. We declare that we will stand on your word, Lord, that um, our children are a blessing. And we pray as parents, Lord, that you will lead and guide us um, to help us as we face different situations, that we will be able to um, respond to those situations in a godly manner, knowing that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Um, and that we can't fight a spiritual war with carnal weapons. Lord, help us to remember that every time we deal with situations um, with our children, with our spouse, and our family as a whole, that we're in a spiritual warfare just because we chose to follow you. And um, we just pray that you will lead us, Lord God, that every time we're faced with a situation, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will lead us in how to handle that in um, choosing the right words to say, Lord, even saying it with the right tone of voice and even speaking in the right time so that uh, we're not making the situation worse and that we're not making it more burdensome than it has to be. And, Lord, we pray for every family that's represented here and just ask, Lord, for your peace um, to abide in their homes, Lord, and where there may be confusion, Lord, that understanding will take place, where there may be unforgiveness, Lord, that forgiveness would take place, Lord God, that healing will take place. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We want to say thank you all for tuning in uh, for this broadcast, and we pray that you will tune in the same time next week for more of God's Blueprint for Family. Have a nice night.